Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. When do you stage in to a position? Um, we've talked about, about staging before, but there's two rules that I would suggest to you. Is um, number one, I don't think you should even think about staging until you've had at least 200 trades and six months of trading experience successful. In other words, you've net profited over that six month period of time and you have at least 200 trades under your, under your belt. But look, if you don't have that kind of experience, um, you, just, you just shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't be complicating your thing. You go all in and come all out until you learn what you're supposed to be doing. And in, in, in my world where I teach students, um, you don't come off of that $1,000 uh, starting bank where you're trading one mini lot for at least a couple of hundred trades so that you you're, you can prove that you're consistent doing that one thing. You don't want to complicate your life by um, uh, staging and, and all that other stuff that, that you could do until you've got a firm grasp on whether you have the ability to read those opening uh, uh, entry points you know, read that that situation clearly so that your trade at least has a chance to go into profit so um, that's number one is 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 when you have that experience and um, you, you know you're successful at that whatever that level is that you're gonna that you're going to go in and do that and then the other thing is you don't want to be staging on a mini lot and I'm not real sure that you want to stage even if you had two to five mini lots. You're supposed to be learning on the mini lot, on the single mini lot, how to trade. That's all you need to learn how to do. As soon as you learn how to trade on the mini lot, you shouldn't be trading three minis, five minis, eight minis. You should be trading only in full lot positions after that. So you either know what you're doing or you don't. You know, don't waste five years of your life farting around in simulated accounts and trading mini accounts and all that other crap. Get the, you, when you figure that you know what you're doing and you are consistent and you're not gonna lose your ass, Put your money then. Get a large account. Well, you know, when you're starting out, you might not only have but $10,000 to, to trade that full lot position. Um, and so you're not going to be able to stage on the one lot because you shouldn't, again, you should not be trading in mini lot increments. So you either trade one full lot or you trade two full lots. You don't trade them a full and a half. I, it just, it, it's... It, it's crazy, because if you're trading a, a, a full and a half, what are you doing? You're compounding. Well, that's a complexity. And I'm not sure that you want to get into that incremental um, compounding until you've got the experience necessary to do that. I think staging is a less complex matrix, decision matrix, than um, compounding as, as ever going to be. So, again, you, you're not going to be able to start, in my, in my, in my view, this is my opinion, you're not going to, you shouldn't start staging in until you've got $20,000 in your account, so you can trade full, two full lots. Now, yeah, 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 sure, you say, well, you know, my uh, currency pair only requires um, $400 of margin, so I've got $600 to play with. Why can't I open it with uh, $700 and trade one full at $700? Don't, if you think that way, you are doomed to get going to the wood. You really are. Because the, the number one rule is that you can't over leverage yourself. If you, if you don't have the, the money to go in 
properly, you should not be trading. Okay, until you've got $10,000, don't trade a full lot. Just don't. You're just not going to be as successful as you think you are. You make the transition from one mini to one full. And from one full to two fulls or ten fulls or whatever you're going to do, because after that it's only zeros. So when you get ready to stage in, is six months, seven months in? I mean, I hope not. The folks that would be um, studying this stuff from me, I would hope that you would be trading a live account within three weeks to, to, to three months at a maximum, trading a thousand dollar mini. And then it's a simple matter of how long is it going to take you to throw a couple hundred trades on or get six months of experience with a couple of hundred trades using that mini lot. So it's not going to take you very long, particularly if you stay as a day trader, because you can trade, you know, three, you're, going to, you're going to be really active. You trade three times a day, even if you're only trading for a few hours a day. If you're trading on down on the five minute chart, it gives you 12 decision opportunities an hour, I guess, is, is, is basically what you're, what you're looking at. So, I mean, if you can't find two or three trades in a two hour or three hour period of time, um, you're looking for long-term profits and instead of focusing on what the task at hand is, which is learning how to trade. So you should be able to accumulate uh, within six months, which is a short period of time, um, a couple of hundred trades. You know, I mean, if, you are, if you're really confident and you really got a good start to it, maybe a hundred trades, maybe, maybe a hundred trades. I mean, at least that gets you into reasonable statistical likelihood that over 100 trades you've seen most of the conditions in the market that you'll see. Uh, you might not have seen a, uh, like the other, uh, a month ago I, I had done a video where I was talking about a, hundred, a one minute 137 pip pin bar. Um, so I mean I haven't seen a pin bar that big, I haven't seen a pin bar that big in a one minute time frame, I've certainly seen 50 and 60 pip pin bars. I had never seen 137 pip pin bar. Um, so, you know, at 100 trades, you may not see that. You may not see uh, a gap at the five minute uh, time frame level. You may not experience um, really radical reaction during non farm payroll. You may not have even decided to trade non-farm payroll within 100 trades or a couple of months of, of experience trading just because you shy away from it. Um, you know, my suggestion to my students is to trade the non-farm payroll. But the only way you're going to figure out whether you ought to do it or not is to trade it. If you can figure out how to trade it, that's great. That's another tool in your toolbox. If you get flustered and your bowels get an uproar of trading non-farm payroll, then you know, you don't trade on that. That, that particular Friday of the month, or Friday of the month, for non-farm payroll. You know, this is stuff that you learn, okay? So, when you get to the point where you've satisfied whatever criteria you have as a successful trader trading down on the mini lot level, and it's time to jump up to, to uh, full lot positions, you need 10,000 bucks to trade a full. Well, that's fine. You should be able to come up with 10,000 bucks. But, I mean, you know, if you can't sell your truck and uh, work an uh, extra shift, uh, you could do that. You know, read The Automatic Millionaire. Well, don't buy a latte every time you walk out the door. You know, instead of buying organic, you know, whole wheat, professionally ground pasta, buy Barilla. I, you know, there's all kinds of ways that you can save money. Don't lease a Lexus for Six hundred dollars a month. Buy a beater for two thousand bucks. Amortize that out over the year. It's two hundred bucks. It's two hundred bucks a month. <laughs> and you're going to pay five hundred dollars to lease the Lexus. Please, please, don't tell me you can't come up with ten thousand dollars. And if you're successful with that ten thousand dollars, maybe you're going to make fifty percent return. Well, in a, in a, in a, under a year, you could probably break into trading two full lots. 
I don't know, and you, I mean saving your money and increasing your bank size so that you could get two full lots because the only way you're going to stage is by coming in with two full lots. The simple process that I would suggest that you do if you're going to come in and start learning to stage is to come in with two full lots when you get up to a certain point because I'm on the five minute chart with a five period ATR, um, I'm gonna pull one of those lots off at five pips. Because I know that if I can make five pips three days a week, I'm making 60 pips a month, which is a 60% return on my bank, sized in thousand dollar increments. 60% return on a thousand dollar bank, 60% return on a hundred thousand dollar bank, don't make any difference. Okay, five pips, three days a week. So when you have that $20,000, <coughs> excuse me, in your account, you would go in, you do your entry with uh, two lots, and you pull one off at five pips. That's, that's what I would do. And then you bring your stop up to break even. If it goes against you, you've made five pips. Yeah, it does reduce your... Um, well, what you would call your uh, reward to risk or whatever you've risked to to make five pips on one. It, 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 but I, because I don't believe in that reward to risk ratio, I think that's just stupid. Um, I don't worry about that because I'm not worried about that loss of that other um, lot that would, would come down and, and stop me out. I'm concerned about guaranteeing myself five pips every time I sit down at the table. It doesn't matter whether I make five pips on a thousand dollars or five pips on a million dollars. It doesn't make any difference. It's five pips. And so I'm going to protect that position. And look, you say, well, geez, you know, I pull, pull off at just five pips, then you lose all the, all the money that could have made if it went up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But more often than not, it turns around and goes against you because until you really get an understanding of, of uh, entry theory so that the, you know that the price has enough momentum to go 10 pips or 15 or 20 pips before it flips around and goes against you. If you don't know that, and even when you do know how to do that, why not grab that five pips off the top and let the other guy run? Right? So... You go in with two, you pull one off at five pips. At 10 pips, you put the one that you pulled in back in. So now you've got 10 pips earning on one. If it falls back um, uh, to your stop and you lose that, uh, that five pips on the new one that you put in, you still have five plus five, or so you still got 10 pips out of the trade. So you're in good shape. But now, if you get both of those to move to the next level, whatever that is, it could be five pips, it could be 10 pips, it all depends on a reasonable distribution of, of ad points between your original entry and your theoretical profit target, right? So that just means if you wanna maximize that, say that thing runs to, to 40 pips, well, you know, you've got um, 40, uh, 40 pips on the one lot and you've got 35 pips or, or 30 pips on the, on the second lot. What are you going to do? Are you going to squeal because you lost five pips by not being back in at that time? Come on. That's, just, that's stupid. That's stupid thinking. The thing that may concern you is to say, geez, I've identified my entry point so well that I'm consistently getting to 15, 20, 30 pips on the thing and I'm getting there with these two lots. If I had more lots to stage in, I could, I could compound that, that profit growth, right? And so, well, <laughs> you sell the car <laughs> again and you put another 10 grand in or you put 20 grand in or you get up and you trade in a $50,000 account, which is where you really need to be in order to make this thing work and this thing is a series of computer simulations that I ran based on how many times you stage in and, how, and, and where you are at and how you do all that stuff. And the optimum is having five lots 
when you finally get to your maximum profit level where you were the one that you just put in that falters and you're going to lose a few pips on that and stop the rest out so you get 4.3 uh, lot uh, times the number of pips that you made in that uh, in that trade you know once you once you once you get to that uh, level where you're where you're experiencing that level of success um, you, you've built in a system for yourself that you can then modify to better um, take advantage of your skill level you can get skilled at trade entry evaluation as a base ability um, and a base ability would say oh I've identified and I consistently identify uh, trade entry opportunities where the, the, the position would present 20 pips of profit um, and I'm consistently able to get 10 pips out of that well that's a really good thing but how are you going to stage five lots into a 10 pip position oh you're not so you don't need um, uh, $50,000 to do that because you're never going to get to the point where you're going to be able to distribute the 50 out. But you say, I want to make more money. Great. Instead of opening with two lots, open with three. Take one off. So you lock the five. Let those run. Add that one, back, add that one, add, add that one plus another two at your next point. And ah, now you're in for three. So, uh, I mean, I'm, uh, for five total. So you can do it on any amount of dollar value that you have, but the staging schedule has to change with your ability to identify what the potential profit is in the overall scheme of things, in the overall trade. Sometimes you're just not going to be able to be good enough and it isn't a reflection on you whether you're smart enough, or, but you just whether you can see it or not, you know. Um, oh, here's a here's an opportunity to get 20 pips, but I only got eight. Well, why? Uh, what did some anomaly happen, or are you always falling short of the 20 pip run? Okay, so <clears throat> that's where your win loss ratio comes into play, and what your average per trade expectation is that's why you do these metric calculations so that you can when you get skilled enough where you're going to consider a staging type of strategy that you know how much real estate you have to spread those uh, staging events out over and if you're not good enough to have a lot of real estate to do that but you are good enough to get 10 pips why stage? Put them all in at the beginning and let them all ride. What difference does it make? When you finally figure things out, I'll tell you this. Ten years ago, I did a uh, computer simulation analysis that did about 700,000 iterations by using all kinds of different staging in um, levels. I'd start with one, I'd add one, and I'd add two, and I'd add four. I'd start with four, and add one, and add two, and add three, and add two. Whatever that matrix is, there were, I think, 20 different permutations of the, of the staging process that, that were, were, were validly looked at, and did, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of iterations over that. And you know what came out to be the best dollar value of all of the, of the trading um, strategies well you've already tried you already know that let's go all in and come all out <laughs> that only makes sense <laughs> so the question comes why would you stage the reason that you stage more often than not is when you are a longer term trader with a longer term view that's willing to take a 20 or 30 pip retracement and leave those positions on and then continue to pick them up as they go. I'm not a believer in that. I'm a believer in doing some moderate staging in as long as I've got 20 or 30 pips as a profit target, do some moderate staging in and when I'm all in and I get to that final profit target, 
Um, if I've got dry powder, I can start adding to it at that. I'm not going to continue to add blah, 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 all the way up until I'm um, out of my staging. I have, a, I have an idea of how far my staging is going to go. And if the price goes beyond that, I'm going to let it continue to go beyond it until I can protect all the staged lots that I have in. And then I have to evaluate the price action as to is, is this a valid entry point? If I didn't have a position on the table, would this be a valid entry point? If it is, then I start over again with the dry powder. That's why if I got, um, if I have a $50,000 account, I really shouldn't be trading with 50. I should be trading with 30 because I always want to have some dry powder in the event that the process runs out and is satisfied. What if it continues to go on? I want some more dry powder to add in. The most money you're going to make in trading is by going all in, riding it all the way up, and when you get a fearful, throw a lock stop on it and add some more. And you just keep doing that. So you've got to have a, a, a large account to make a large uh, amount of money to take advantage of those other opportunities. And so staging kind of clips you from doing that unless you've got this long, long, long term view and you don't want to be in there initially with a whole lot of heat because if it goes against you you don't want to lose a lot so therefore you stage into the situation when i look at staging as a day trader with only 20 20 pip real estate to to look at the only reason that i'm staging is because i want to pull one lot off at five pips so that i can lock that five pips okay and then the rest of it has to be staged one at a time because the last thing you want to do is upside down pyramid. You don't want to stage one and then add two and then go to three because that is a, I don't know, sit down and do the math on that when it goes wrong on you and see what happens. That's, 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 a, that's a sound of a flush right away. So when you're, when you're starting out trading, don't think about all these complexities of staging and, and uh, oh, I don't know, uh, doing uh, reverse ads uh, when the price uh, retraces against you and then so you pick up more lots on the way back up. I mean, that's a form of staging, but it's done differently. I mean, just don't get fancy. Go all in at the start and come all out when it's time to come out. And if you go in at the start and you're constantly getting wiped out, um, figure out why you're not doing your trade entry the, uh, theory the right way, or not theory, but your trade entry analysis the right way. Well, that's the only reason that you're getting stopped out all the time is because you don't understand how to do trade entry analysis. So figure it out. You can look at each, each time that you lose and you could go, well, uh, I shouldn't have gone in there because I, it, it, I lost. Well, why did it lose? What was the momentum of, of, of the price? Was it down farm payroll day? Were you trading it friggin' two o'clock in the morning when your two country pairs were, or were there, all the traders were sleeping? Was it um, a trade put in on a, on, a, on a Monday morning and you got flushed with a London Open type thing? I mean, you just, you have to be able to identify why the trade entry doesn't work. It's not because you're stupid, it's just because you haven't figured it out yet, okay? So, um, those are the things that you learn by only trading one mini account, all in, all out. Man, if you can't do that and, and consistently get five pips average over all the trades that you make as your per, what, what I call a per trade expectation value, um, you're delusional in thinking about doing anything more complicated than that or even in trading with a higher bank. From experience, I'll tell you, I thought I understood all this stuff. I listened to all these YouTube videos and all this theory and all this bullshit, and that's what it is. It is bullshit. I trusted that. Well, I became a millionaire in real estate because I read the books that were available. I talked to the people that were out there that were doing this stuff, and it was all right. It was true. But not in the currency market. I, why, would I, why, would I, why would I doubt that? cost me $50,000. That's stupid. That's stupid. You need to think 
for yourself as to how you want to approach your trading and what sort of contingencies do you want to be on the alert for that you seem prevalent to fall into. It's only in that way that you'll gain the skill to make, be able to make the determination as to if staging is what you want to do and are you going to stage as a, um, a day trader or are you going to stage as a long-term trader? And are you also going to have a corresponding pull-off uh, stage out process uh, that you're going to add to that, which just complicates all that beyond comprehension. But that's still, when you have the experience, you can do that. So those are the decisions that you need to make. But if you're just starting out in trading and you have less than 200 trades and less than six months of trading, don't listen to anybody that's telling you anything different. Really because it's just not gonna work unless that person is leaning over your shoulder saying, oh, take this trade, do this and do that and do this. If you're listening to somebody who's telling you what to do, oh, this is what I'm looking at because of blah, 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 and you're taking that trade, <clears throat> you're doing yourself a disservice. You're not learning how to trade. You're learning how to listen to somebody else and they're telling you what to do. You're not developing those skills on your own because when you lose the trade, you can always blame the person that gave you the information. You're not gonna take the blame on yourself. The reason I learned how to do it is because I didn't lay the blame off on anybody except myself. I was stupid and I listened to people that maybe they knew what they were doing, but they certainly didn't know how to teach it. And I should have been able to look at that stuff out there and just from a conceptual standpoint say, well, whoa, wait a minute. There's certain things that I need to do before I do A, B, or C. I need to do step zero. So in the consideration of any of these exotic trading strategies, take, take stock of yourself and what your ability level is, or talk to somebody who knows what they're doing and say, look, this is what I've been doing, this is the systems I've been using, blah, 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 blah. Do you think I have the skill to be able to do X, Y, Z? And um, if the person tells you, oh yeah, I think you do, he's full of shit. Because if you've mentioned all that stuff, it means you're not ready. You're out there shotgunning shit to see if it works. Well, let's see, the Bollinger Bands didn't work. Let me try a fucking Egyptian uh, pattern or the friggin' what is it, the spy, Rob Booker's uh, spiral of death pattern. I mean, you know, oh God almighty. Just look at the chart and see if the, if, the, if the price has enough juice to make it to the level that you want it to make it to. If you think it's got the juice, take your trade. If you don't think it has the juice, don't take the trade. And if you thought it had the juice and it didn't make it and it stopped you out, figure out why that happened. You're not going to solve it that time. But after you lose 10 times in a row, you're going to go, oh, wait a minute. Uh, there's a commonality here in these 10 or 20 or 30 times th that I've screwed this up. Maybe that's what I should do. Or maybe I should do this instead of that. You have two options. Yeah, right? And look, if you're doing that on a mini account and you lose 30 times in a row, you lost $30. A fucking pizza. Come on. Would you rather do it like I did it and lose $50,000? It's up to you. Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Have a great day and have a great trading day.